You have a multi-million dollar decision on the line, whether you realize it or not. In this video, we're gonna break down the difference between ETFs and mutual funds, ultimately determining which is the best for your portfolio. Okay, first off, let's get into some basics. An ETF, which is an exchange traded fund, is a collection of stocks that you can trade in your IRA brokerage account, just like you would a stock. An ETF can allow you to follow an index like the S&P 500, a company size, or a particular sector or industry. Now, on the other hand, a mutual fund, even though it's also a collection of stocks, is actively managed by a fund manager, and you cannot trade it throughout the day like an ETF. A mutual fund settles at the end of the day, and that's when you make your purchase. So apart from that, what is the difference between these two? In most ETFs, at least the ones you should be investing in, they are passively managed. The holdings of the fund only change in accordance with the sector or index that it follows. For example, if the companies in the S&P 500 were to change, the holdings of the Vanguard 500 Index Fund ETF, which is also VOO, will also change accordingly. Now, there are some ETFs that do have actively managed managers, something as famous as ARK by Kathy Wood. There are two major benefits to ETFs. First, it's just a lot less work for you. You can rest easy at night knowing that the person in charge will automatically follow the index or sector and make the appropriate changes for you without you lifting a finger. This also leads to the second major benefit. These funds have extremely low expense ratios, well less than the typical 1% or so that mutual funds have. Why? There are no marketing fees or a lot less marketing fees. You don't have to pay a bunch of analysts and researchers to go out there and spin their wheels trying to, trying to justify their expenses and therefore trying to get higher returns, which never come to pass. Now, this comes in stark contrast to a mutual fund, which obviously charges the higher fees because of the fund manager, and you have expenses with getting in and out of stocks. Where the problem lies is that more often than not, mutual funds do not beat the market and you're paying higher fees than so something that doesn't even match the market. And this could lead to millions lost in retirement. Now you might be confused thinking to yourself, wait, these are smart Harvard MBAs managing it. They're doing their research. Guys, they're still humans. They still have careers they need to protect. And that's what causes people to make mistakes. In any given year, 82% of actively managed mutual funds do not beat the S&P. And over a 10 year period, it's two or 3%. So why pay all these fees to even underperform the market? Okay, guys, in our retirement calculator, I've put some inputs in here. First off, I'm gonna assume your age is 30. Second, you're gonna retire at 65. Third, your current savings at $100,000. You're gonna save an extra $10,000 per year in one of your accounts, whether it's IRA, 401k, separate brokerage, and you're gonna increase that by 4% per year. During that time, you're gonna get 9.5% annualized returns the market tends to get nine to 10% over long periods of time. So I'm assuming nine and a half percent in that low cost ETF. During retirement at the age of 65, you're gonna get about 6% return. And I'm gonna have you dying at hundred. And the reason we do this is so many retirement calculators stop at retirement, but you gotta remember you have 20 or 30 years more to live after you, after you retire, you need to make sure your money can last. Just having $2 million isn't enough if you're spending a lot. And finally, your current income of $75,000 per year. Again, assumptions, and I want you to live up that same amount of money. Now, in retirement, it'll factor in $75,000 a year, in, adjusted for inflation over the next 35 years in our retirement calculator. We hit the generate button. Do you have enough in retirement? Yes. In this end balance right here, at 65 years old, you have $6.6 .6 million, which in today's money is worth about 2 million bucks. You're withdrawing about 260,000 a year. And when you pass away at 100, you're gonna have about $6 million left over. That's absolutely incredible. Now, I wanna show you guys the scary part. Let's take out, instead of 9.5%, you're gonna underperform by call it a half percent per year, and you're gonna be charged 1% per year. So you're losing 1.5% per year to an actively managed mutual fund. I'm gonna put an 8% here. And during retirement, you're still gonna stay in those funds. I'm only gonna go 5% here. Generate. You do not have enough in retirement. You went from having enough to now you need to save $7,600 more, which is 76% more. Instead of having 6.7 million in retirement, you have 4.5. 
So it costs you over $2 million and you're flat broke at the age of 86. That is the difference between an ETF that can match the market and potentially losing out by investing with an actively trading manager that's not going to do as good a job. Ultimately, the key with buy and hold long-term investing is to stay in and avoid trying to time the market or trying to figure out what the next best thing is. You saw the numbers. They are off the charts. So to recap, history has shown that the vast majority of mutual funds will not outperform the S&P 500, and the insane fees make it even less of an investment. Put money into an S&P 500 ETF with a low expense ratio every month in your IRA, 401k, or brokerage account, and watch it compound into millions of dollars in your retirement savings. Want to know which ETF to invest in? Click here. Thanks, guys.